all through cutting your block and understanding why you're mistaken. The, the reason being that it's a tool. Once you, you, you have me sit down and sleep, you will have to go through to that perfect degree before you come to exercise it. So, um, for the Chinese to become illegal without detection would be, would be difficult. If it is true that they are coming in to do on a free business, then we really have to investigate how they are doing. It will be difficult to go through. Are you saying that if somebody passes through like Georgia and enters illegally without passing through a plow, mm -hmm. and their routes they can use to enter town without going? To, I mean, he can pass through who, so that he can no, get to Accra without going no, no. through Sugarcoffee. There's a Sikuma. There's another barrier at a Sikuma, and immigration officials are that barrier customs. But if he takes a normal trotter and sits inside, how do you know and check? Um, we are not targeting Chinese, but I mean, no, I mean non ghanaians How do you know? That is why we always will stop the car and ask the driver, do you have foreigners in? No, we're still moving just to check. There are times when some would slip through, but we believe, I mean, security and law enforcement is, is collaboration with our own compatriots. We are all supposed to be watchmen. So if you know that somebody's in the car, he's a foreigner, he hasn't mm -hmm. got to the approval, route, it's very to tip us off. Oh, we'll come to mining in a bit, but you said something that even though they come legally, yeah. they may violate the terms of their stay. Does that suggest that for immigration, all you do is to check whether they come in right or wrong? You don't have no nothing to do with what non ghanaians do. No, no, we, whilst they are here. Our mandate, our mandate covers um, employment, residence, and deportation of foreigners, apart mm -hmm. from the entry and exit um, controls and other related matters. So it, it cuts across um, the activities in. So we have a, an enforcement unit whose responsibility basically is to ensure that foreigners within the country are complying with the rules. So if people are violating the stems of their entry visa or whatever in uh, documents you're giving them, yeah. is that a failure on somebody's part? No, if, if individuals breach the conditions, it's the individual who has opted to breach the condition and therefore sanctions should be applied. It's not about somebody failing in their duty. It's the individual who has, for instance, you've been given a resident permit to work for company A. Mm -hmm. Now you decide, you decide to resign from company A. You don't inform immigration about your decision to resign. You go to company B, working with the resident permit issued in the name of company A. You have breached the rules because you are not supposed to use that permit to work for company B. In that case, the individual has opted to breach the law. But would you know? The question is, how would you find out if the person had moved? Is there a system where you can check whether the license you issued to Mr. B in terms of what his conditions of stay here are, are being adhered to without he volunteering to tell you until your enforcement unit comes across and you not know but you see the law also makes provision for the employer to inform gis seven days after they have decided to lay an employee off or whether when an employee decides to resign it's a responsibility of the employer to inform us it's also a responsibility of the individual or the the, the employee and the employer as, as, uh, are required by law to inform GIS about a cessation of employment. So if they don't do that, they, they breach the law and they'll have to be taken on when that individual is arrested. Can you tell us a bit about how many people you've arrested when it has to do with galamse or legal mining? If that appears to be the main ticket item in terms of non ghanaians involved, what, where are they typically from? What form does it typically take? And how many people have you arrested who have been involved illegally? Um, you mean this year or previous? I don't know. Maybe okay. let's, you can use maybe from 2010 or what, I don't know what time frame. I, I, I think that if I have to, has I don't have the figures with me right now, but we should be heading close to over 400 to 500 repatriations of individuals engaged in um, small scale mining. Since when? Let's take from 2010. Really? Yeah, 2010. 2009, 2010. 2017. Over 400 people? Yeah. In which particular regions do they do these things? Um, you find quite a number in Ashanti, Western Central. Ashanti, Western Central. So how do you get these people? Is there a tip-off? How do you find them? We have an intelligence unit that also goes around to find information where foreigners are engaging in illegal activity. They, they, they have a way of informing us. Our enforcement units are also on the ground. We also have regional offices, district offices, 
who also tip us off about activities going on in their respective regions. Some of the districts do not have the capacity to go on a, a serious operation and therefore have to rely on Accra for um, support. So if you if you recall, the operations we had in the Western Central regions where we had officers from Accra going in to support our officers in those respective regions. I think um, as an institution, we, we've, we have our own challenges in terms of uh, resources, resources, resources to enable us to be effective on the ground. Uh, it would, uh, there would only be a need for an operation if we have the right logistics. It means that it will be routine. It will be doing that and we will not have a situation where we we'll have to call on Leslie Accra to come and support officers in the Western region. We have our enforcement unit well equipped in the Western and Central regions. So those are some of the challenges we've had, but <clears throat> I believe um, it's a mandate that this country has given to us. In spite of the inadequate logistics, we still will go ahead and do our job. If you watch the clip uh, about the operation in the Western Center, you realize these are officers who did not even have adequate weapons to and vehicles to go ahead, but they still did a good job. We brought in, I think, about 80 um, Chinese nationals. Some fled into the bush, etc. But what are the foreigners doing? I mean, is it that they are they are looking for gold? Is it that they are providing services to locals? Because we it's a very omnibus expression to say they are illegal foreign uh, small scale mining. Mm -hmm. So what 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 do they do or what what form does their offense take? What are they involved in? For instance, some of those we've arrested. You see, the small scale mining sector has various legislations mm -hmm. governing the operation. So the Minerals Commission have their law, which mm -hmm. says that um, the small scale mine is a preserve of Ghanaians. They also have some other laws which talks about mine support services, etc. Mm -hmm. They also have offenses and penalties in those laws. GIS also has this law, which deals with foreigners and the fact that once they breach their conditions of entry, a certain action has to be taken. So I, I think that. In dealing with this, these matters, GIS is limited in the whole, limited in the sense that our activities are restricted to foreigners. So when we find foreigners operating in the mines, be it the large scale mining sector or the small scale mining sector, and they do not have the right documentation to work, that is when we consider the activities illegal and we'll have to arrest them. They could have, they could have legitimate documentation, but they may be breaching the environmental protection law where they are spilling water, etc., or they could have legitimate papers, but it turns out that the license of the operator has expired. So there are so many offenses that could come out within that area. But for GIS, ours is this foreigner operating here. Have mm -hmm. we granted him permit to operate in this particular area? If not, he's broken the law. That's very interesting. There was an in interesting case in point which generated such controversy, the so-called Hansel Yeah, matter. the Hansel issue. We'll put a couple of questions to you on that sure. before we come back to the president's attempt to deal with it through the task force. In the wake of the uh, 125 or so arrest, um, the Hansel Small Scale Mining Company um, alleged that uh, the Ghana Immigration Service and the other security agencies that uh, went on that uh, project or the uh, arrest had you know stolen some 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 of their products now you have defended yourself uh, but what kind of license did they have that sort of allowed them to have the Chinese working for them and could we, could we not have had Ghanaians do that work I mean for for GIS our position is clear on that matter. the records we have from the interior ministry the records we have from our own internal systems um, they don't have the requisite documentation to engage the services of those individuals they are employed. Mm. But if you you have to speak to the Minerals Commission to speak to the issues of mine support services. Okay. Because there's this whole legislation on mine support services where individuals, for instance, um, a, a, a local person has a mine. He doesn't have the men and the ability and the capability to to um, drill or to mine mm -hmm. the gold, so he goes for a mine support services, whose basic duty is is contract mining. So he brings his men, he's engaged, he's been employed basically by the owner of the mine to do the mining. 
So that person may have foreigners in his in his company as a mining support service. And he goes into a small scale mining sector and is mining. Now the point is, are they operating illegally? And those are aspects of the law, I'm sure, by this tax force, we will have to look at. Because for the ordinary onlooker, this is a small scale mine. You are having foreigners working on, your mind. on yeah. the mine. But the foreigners will tell you that we are being contracted to work for the local guy. Whether we want that kind of activity, what law seek to cure? Does the law seek to empower the Ghanaian to, to have, I mean, money out of his license or is the Ghanaian is the law seeking to allow Ghanaian youth to work in the industry to 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 deal with the issue of unemployment mm -hmm. those are issues that we need to look at when interrogating the league the, the legislative frameworks of the minerals formation mm. and DIS. I also think that with regards to um, um, this issue of um, Hansol etc I mean we, we have made our point clear that where where they are claiming to have had those challenges in terms of machines, industry, etc. We was in the Ashanti region, we were in the western and central regions, and we have our own evidence to show how we conducted our exercise. We haven't had any complaints from any police or anybody in the western and central regions that somebody has come complain about theft, etc. Mm -hmm. So for us, I mean, we don't even want to go into But we understand that sometimes when the Chinese are caught, they are saying they don't speak the language. In fact, there, there's a report that a number of Chinese who were repatriated claim that they have lost their passports and so they, are, they still can't leave. There's always, it's as if you, you have difficulty in the, the, the shooting last week as well. We are told that the Chinese people who involved, it was even difficult for police to interrogate them because of language. How does immigration do with, with, with such people? Um, we are fortunate to have um, a number of our officers who have been trained in China to speak the language. So when we have such serious challenges, we either fall on them or we also fall on other Chinese who are in a position to interpret. We also have this very good collaboration with the Chinese embassy in Ghana. So they also step in to assist when uh, they, in, in assisting the extended consular services to those who have been arrested and also to help us understand um, why they were in or what they were doing. So we've not really had challenges, serious challenges where we can't understand or appreciate what um, they are saying regarding. Mm. Yeah. Let's hear the president out uh, sort of tasking his new committee or task force to deal with the problem. This is President Mahama. Ladies and gentlemen, your task is simple and straightforward. It is to actualize my determination to bring sanity into the mining sector, including my pledge to ensure that the small-scale mining sector is reserved for Ghanaians, as stated by law. You're being put together to work and coordinate the various efforts because the activities of illegal small-scale mining breeds consequences that are multifaceted and cut across uh, sectors. And that's why your particular sectors have been chosen to be part of this task force. Remember that government is not against small-scale mining. What if we want is for those who are engaged in small-scale mining to follow the required procedures that govern mining in our country. Your mandate is to ensure that our laws in the small-scale mining subsector are fully enforced and may include the following. Seize equipment used by those who fail to comply with the new directives of obtaining licenses or renewing their licenses. Arrest and prosecute anybody, both Ghanaian and non ghanaians involved in illegal small-scale mining. Deport non ghanaians involved in illegal small-scale mining. Revoke the license from Ghanaians who have subleased their concessions to non ghanaians against the rules. Revoke the licenses of Ghanaians who have engaged the services of non ghanaians the non ghanaian miners in the small-scale mining sector in ways that are contrary to the rules. Hold MMDCs and their respective dissects accountable for illegal mining activity in their areas of jurisdiction. Well, so that was President Mahama inaugurating the committee which involves the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, uh, Inusa Hussein, the Minister for Defense, 
Mr. Uh, Mark Uyongo, the Minister for Interior, Chris Ahoy, the Foreign Minister, Ms. Hanatete, the Minister for Environment, Science and Technology, Dr. Joe Oting Eje, among others. You heard the President talking about their mandate. Let's take a comment from Frank Kujo from Imani. He's the Executive Director of Imani. Is this the best way to flash out illegal small scale mining by both Ghanaians and non Ghanaians? Franklin, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, Bernard, and good morning to your listeners. Is this uh, a. Let me oh, sorry. So yeah. I was just asking, how do you. Is this, a, is this a, a good step in your view in dealing with illegal small scale mining? Well, first of all, the president was very emphatic and clear that it is not as if the foreigners engaged in this mining may be doing something illegal or if they, if they, if they go by the uh, laws and that if they even went to Kenya and come to us. I think he was quite emphatic. So that gives us a, a broad view of what sector, uh, what issue we're actually dealing with. Um, Bernard, tax forces are not new. Look, under President Kufu, we established a tax force to deal with textile and plantation in this country. It didn't work. The next thing the president did was to ensure that all textile importation was rooted now not through Tema, but through Takradi. As we speak, that still hasn't really worked. He's left off for so many years. I think that the intentions of the, the presidency and the tax force may be kind, but the answer actually lies in policy. You know, we, this is clearly an example of the students of decentralization. And that if we do not decentralize effectively the power, and in this case, enforcement of linear rights, if an issue of licenses decentralize it into that level, we would keep on having those problems. If we say that ABCs and DCs ought to be empowered in order to, in order to, we need to empower NDC, that DC and NDC in order to effectively deal with all these issues. I'm not too sure if they do not work within the rules. And by the rules here, I mean the Minerals Commission has got to ensure that we effectively decentralize land and mineral rights to the extent that we can hold people that are accountable and not hold them accountable only because they want to issue good force. Look, if we don't take care in those sort of exercise, we might even have certain infractions. Some of these people that are, have got their permits legitimately, and I'm saying legitimately, but typically through the back door. It is all rain seeking. Once you centralize the issuance of licenses in a crowd, what it means is that you have spread out, uh, you have already decentralized rain seeking because everybody has to go through somebody to get a permit. These Chinese or foreigners who are coming here didn't just use GPSs and then all of a sudden found out in bare land and then hop onto the land and start to dig it. It's just not easy as that. They must have gone through some middlemen who have their uh, other colleagues, who, who are connected to the Minerals Commission. But if the Minerals Commission is not empowered to decentralize the issuance of licenses all the way to the district level and have that combination between the community and the BISEC or the RDCs. Uh, my brother. How, how will, Franklin, how will decentralizing the issuance of mining concessions or mining licenses reduce Galamsey? Well, this is what it is. It only means that now you have ensured that whatever activity occurs in the district, in the rural area, it has the blessings of the community leadership. I mean, the, 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 the district leadership. What is happening clearly, Bernard, is that people have gotten their licenses through the back door, probably from the center. They get there, and people do not know them. So there's that confrontation at the, at the district level, at that level. Who are you? No, well, I've got permits. Look, I got it from here. And then they start blazing their guns on you. You think people have the audacity? You know why the Chinese will have the audacity to, to, to turn guns on Ghanaians? Because somebody has given them the power. But if they got that power from the district, and I'm understanding that clearly, if you want to engage in this enterprise, these are the rules. See us because we are the uh, custodians of the land here, then clearly you, you know that there's peace from the beginning. But where these people come from, all places, as I had a gentleman in the studio talking about, these are people who came through legitimate means. Uh, in fact, they came through, they have their visas issued. 
But of course, they don't tell you what they're coming to do. But they got somebody to give them a license. And if you track them down, invariably, you find out that they got some license to the back door. Why? That is why, if you realize what BVLA and the rest have started doing, it's to decentralize the registration processes of some cars and testing. That is the way to go. What is happening right now, and the recommendation, with due respect, I think it is going to centralize this brute force. Because clearly speaking, at the end of the day, all these in the community, uh, sorry, the ministerial bodies are supposedly having their decentralized agencies also at a district level. If they were working effectively, they wouldn't have really need the president to worry his head over something that is clearly a decentralized matter. All right. So thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Franklin, for your insights. It's nine, it's two minutes to nine. We're still on the city breakfast show talking about mining illegal mining, foreigners involved in illegal mining, and special mention for the Chinese. Now, Mr. Pamdesi, just a quick response to that, and then we continue with this discussion. Send us your thoughts, listeners, by text line 54 Do you agree with what he's saying, that you must decentralize the concession in your experience with dealing with foreigners in illegal mining? I mean, I, I think that there's some form of decentralization in the Minerals Act, where you have the district committees. And the district committees are basically made up of the representative of the Minerals Commission in the district, the district chief executive, a representative from the Environmental Protection Agency, um, a, a representative from the traditional authority. You have a representative from the assembly. So that committee, I think, should be set up. And all, all districts where there's any kind of mining activity must have those committees in place because they are supposed to regulate the activity of small-scale mining in their respective districts. And the, the issue about um, the district not knowing about a license being issued, once the rep of the Minerals Commission is in the district, he would have the records. So that wouldn't even arise. So I think that th that aspect of the Minerals Commission Act, which for me, I think has not been vigorously um, implemented, we should look at it and implement it. Then you also have the DISEX supporting the activities of those district committees because the district chief executive is a member of the district committee and he's also the chairman of the DISEC. So once those bodies are empowered to function, I think that we will deal with the decentralization. When the announcement was made last month after the shooting of two, some Ghanaians by two Chinese, government of Ghana and government of China mm -hmm. resolved to establish a working committee to review circumstances leading to the influx of illegal Chinese miners to Ghana and bring up an integrated roadmap to stop the influx. The committee, we were told, would be constituted with reps from ministries of local government, natural resources and lands, attorney general and ministry of justice, foreign affairs and regional integration, chieftains and traditional affairs, and environment and science. The others are the Chinese embassy, the minerals commission, the national security and the immigration service. So the question is, should illegal mining from foreigners be a joint effort between Ghana government and another government? Or should Ghana government take it as its sole responsibility? Because if the citizens of another country are breaking the law in your country, do you need to collaborate with the government of those citizens to deal with it? Or you need to deal with it with your own laws? Let me talk to uh, Mr. Lloyd Amwa, who's a, I mean, you can call him a, a, a China expert because of his, his studies. He is a professor at Ashesi, but he studied in China. To, to tell us whether this is the best way to go about this Chinese influx. D Dr. Lloyd Amwa, good morning. Thanks for joining the program. Yeah, good morning, my brother. Yes, I, I just read to you something. The government of Ghana and the government of China have decided to come up with a joint working committee to review the circumstances leading to the influx of illegal Chinese miners in Ghana. So it's a government of Ghana and then Chinese embassy committee. Do you think this is the right way to approach the influx of Chinese illegal miners in Ghana? I think that the government of our republic is trying to come to terms with what is turning out to be a particularly, particularly rare in reality. Um, in terms of the institutional approach, I think the logic makes uh, some, some useful uh, sense. Uh, because obviously there are issues, issues that, that are tied in there. Uh, there also is the question of foreign nationals, and therefore the question of what kind of law should be applicable to them under UN conventions 
and the rest of them. Uh, and so I think that it makes sense to want to engage the Chinese uh, in terms of the processes and the principles and the way in which we want to deal with the, the Chinese problem in terms of the, the, the influx of illegal immigrants. But in the long and final run, it will be held back on our republic in terms of our institutions, the political will of this Rama country, and the, the strategic alertness. I mean, that fundamentally is the point. I mean, <laughs> to the extent that these miners go into the, the, the most outermost reaches of our country, you do not expect the Chinese to, or the you know, Chinese immigration officials and the rest of them to deal with them. It, it will be held on. Our, our, our web sets, our biceps, it will be well on our police, it will be well on our citizens. These are the realities. Uh, and so, much as the Chinese side has a stick, I think that the stick is, is limited to some extent. In the long run, it's the question of what it is that we do as, as a country in terms of spending what is becoming an obviously embarrassing and, 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 and almost debilitating uh, question. Now, we are told the Chinese mineral strategy, whether small scale or large scale, is highly extractive. So whereas European companies, when they come to Africa, they do invest. The Chinese are interested in the mat raw materials and exporting them back to China, and then they will process and do whatever they want with it. I mean, in, if you look at the way China has so many investments in Ghana and other African countries, they are building stadia, they are doing all kinds of things. Is, is China's government a, part, a good partner to even contemplate dealing with illegal mining with? Because even at the, at the macro level, they are exploiting your, your raw materials and they are killing your local industries. So should the government of Ghana see China as a partner in dealing with this kind of issue or they should see it more as a threat? Because in the long run, China's impact on your local economy is going to be debilitating. Well, the history of, of the presence of powers in, in Ghana and on the continent of Africa has not been any different in terms of extractive, uh, the extractive agenda in terms of taking out their minerals. Um, if you take all the major, the major mining companies, the Bears, Anglo Gold, and the rest of them, the pattern is, is essentially similar. Uh, the greater question for me is our strategic capacity in terms of what it is that we want for our republic in the international setting and for the long term. Uh, the same way as a clear, clear policy framework in terms of how it is that a country like Ghana, which is essentially on the periphery of world power, in terms to leverage her relationships in the pursuit of a national interest, is what it is that is, 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 is leading us into what is clearly a cul-de-sac. Um, and so, yes, China would, would obviously go into those areas and use the methods that it thinks uh, benefits and, and perceive, allows you to perceive her national, her, her national interest. If, if you have a clear cut policy in terms of where it is that, that Chinese investment should go in terms of our mining regime and that's the whole policy framework, then we then you kind of what, what is essentially not that that's already poor. Well, let's just let's, let's put this argument and look at the Chinese in terms of what we see that they did when it came to the reform and opening up here. They set up these coastal areas, what they call the special economy zones. China was clear where it is that it wanted foreign resources and investments to go. It shepherded them, them in the direction that it wanted. Uh, electronics, you know, light industry, and the like. I mean, so the, the problem really, I think, <laughs> Excuse me. The problem that I like, in my view, in my candid opinion, with, with so much uh, in terms of the Chinese or any of the, the foreign powers who perceive their interest to the extent that we, are, we, we, we do not uh, 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 you know, show the, the, the kind of, of flexibility, flexibility and, 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 and nimbleness that, that is required to operate in, the, in what is essentially a particularly uh, hostile international environment when it comes to business, geopolitics, geostrategy, and the rest of them. So, clearly, uh, the, the, the challenge falls back to us. What is our national plan in terms of the rise of these major powers? Brazil, Turkey, China, and the rest of them. Even Singapore, Malaysia, and, and now the Gulf states. What is our agenda? 
are government institutions which run the presidency, the president, and the rest of them. It's well briefed on these issues, the way that are institutional, intellectual, technical, and the rest of them, to respond to a question that will we care, that will we okay. Whether we complain or not, the questions we make. We will leave you here for now. Thank you for your insights on this subject. Lloyd Amor, a China expert, he is a lecturer in Ashesi, but studied vastly in China, and he was he's more concerned with the geopolitics of um, the issues relating to minerals and seeking for raw materials. But let's come back home again to uh, in studio um, the head of the public affairs of immigration. Palmetti. So, in Sarah, locally, you were talking to him about the the Pansol issue. Yes. Yes. Let's let's bring the issue home. We have gone global, but let's come back home. Yes. I mean, locally, we have we now have this task force and um, mandated to arrest the situation. As far as this task force goes, how do you foresee it carrying this mandate um, effectively? Yeah, and what would be the way for any recommendations, for yeah. example? Yeah. I, I think that the tax forces in place, usually a tax force will come up when um, an issue is almost getting out of hand or is becoming um, such a, a problem. And I think that the task force is in place basically to coordinate activities. Um, but I also think that in the long term, we need to strengthen the institutions that um, would have to, on a day to day basis, deal with these matters. For instance, the GIS deals basically with foreign activities, wherever it be it in small scale mining, trading, etc. Once our enforcement unit is strengthened with the logistics, they need they have adequate vehicles, mm -hmm. they have adequate um, weaponry, they have adequate fuel to do um, uh, what do you call it, patrolling, etc. I think that we will not have a situation where we would need usually such tax forces are at home. It, it cannot be sustained for a long time. Exactly. But they are in there to deal with the situation, the situation to have it normalized. Mm -hmm. Then the agencies that are mandated to do so will go into it. But I think that looking at the, the extractive um, industry, maybe the, the police service would have to start looking at that area to have a specialized unit, just like Waju, mm -hmm. a human trafficking unit, dealing with the extractive industry, where they are specialists in mining activity, they understand the laws very well, they understand the petroleum laws, etc. Once they have that, they will not even need the, 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 all the time the Minerals Commission to assist them, even when they are going on operations. Because this tax force, this um, specialized unit, would always be in collaboration with the regulators and the key agencies. So mm -hmm. I think that we need to grab it to that level. When you take the minerals law, for instance, in enforcing the minerals law, who, who is supposed to enforce it? You would find the police in there. Mm -hmm. But I think that the police has to take a more uh, prominent role in helping to enforce the minerals law. We will right. deal with Because you, you, your, your mandate is limited. So exactly. immigration can only say your papers are not right. Mm -hmm. But the police cover the whole gamut of things. Precisely. So you are suggesting a, a unit for illegal mining. Yes, not only illegal, but take mining generally, take petroleum. Because we may start having problems maybe in the future mm -hmm. with petroleum. But the extractive industry... You need specialized police mm. who yes. understand those things. Yes. An interesting place to stop with this discussion is this, uh, Mr. Pamplesi. Thank you very much for talking to us on the City Breakfast Show. It's some 11 minutes past the hour of 9. We were talking... We had three people, actually. First, Franklin Kujo from Imani, who did not think that the government task force on illegal mining was enough, but that we should decentralize the, the giving out of mining concessions. Uh, Lloyd Amma joined us. He's on the line from Netherlands, actually. He said... We need to think about how we negotiate the murky waters of international geopolitics, especially the Chinese, because they have an agenda for us, but do we have an agenda for them? And Mr. Pambetti gave us a sense of the situation on the ground. The immigration seems to be on top of the issue of dealing with people who outstep their bounds as foreigners. When we come back, we'll be going to Cuba to speak to some Ghanaians who have been trained by the Cuban system, and they say they are making a contribution in Ghana. Don't forget that we'll be going to court as well for the day, is it day 14? Hmm. The, the, we've, yeah, lost we've lost count. Plenty yeah. days. It, it's actually season four, episode two. Of the, exactly. <laughs> of the Chachu Dr. P. Sheet saga. <laughs> so when we come back, there's more as well. Stay tuned.
This is the City Breakfast Show, the city's biggest conversation. As Ghana 2012, I'm contributing to the fight against infant maternal mortality. As Miss Ghana 2012 first runner-up, addressing issues concerning the environment for me as a noble venture.